Well, Monsoon 2025 is here, or is it? We're all waiting for the rain, and joining me today is Randy Servany from ASU. Randy, thank you so much for being here. First of all, you're uh, you know, one of the Valley's best weather experts when it comes to these things, so we're always looking for your insight. And um, I've been getting a lot of questions about the monsoon and, and about how our monsoon's changing as our climate changes. And I think Absolutely. we're seeing that again this year. Yeah. I mean, there is a, a, a lot of variability to it. Uh, yeah. so there are some, some years where it's more over into the west along the Colorado River. Yeah. There are some years where it is over us. Happens that so far this year, it's all been over in New Mexico. I mean, yeah, they're uh, getting it bad. Ruidoso getting flooded. Exactly. Several and times. Uh, yeah. Santa Clara's already gotten eight inches of, uh, yeah. of rain this uh, this summer. Just uh, it's been a very wet season over on the other side of the uh, the range. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to predict exactly where that monsoon flow is going to end up. So, for example, leading into the monsoon season, the Climate Prediction Center came out with their outlook and said above average, but that's a really broad brush that they painted above average across the Southwest. Yeah. And it just ends up that New Mexico, West Texas, it's working out for them, but it's not so much working out for us. Right. Uh, it would have been nice to have had a continuation of what we started uh, at the beginning of the season. We remember we had those first few days of July that were actually pretty normal monsoonish. Yeah. Uh, but that was due to some moisture that we had gotten from a tropical cyclone. Right. Uh, Unfortunately, in, in July, the cyclone activity off the coast of, uh, of Mexico just kind of shut down. And yeah. now only is it starting to creep back up and maybe give us a little bit more moisture. Right, but I mean, even with the amount of tropical cyclones that we're starting to see develop down there again, the, the flow pattern has to be right to bring that up. And right now, that ridge of high pressure is so broad and it has been broad. And so it doesn't bring them up. It kicks them out to sea. Exactly. And that's one of the, the things that uh, uh, we've been noticing, and I know you've talked about it a lot, is the idea that the, the subtropical high, the uh, big H that everybody yeah. sees on the weather maps, yeah. is getting bigger. Right. <laughs> and it is uh, expanding over the southwest. Well, unfortunately, you kind of think of the, the big H as like a giant umbrella because it prevents the air from basically rising. In fact, it sinks in under yeah. the high pressure. And what's going to happen is that we, we're dry. We're yeah. clear. And we get, because we're clear, we don't have clouds, we get hot. Right, and that's been a big problem for the last several monsoon seasons, is that that ridge of high pressure has been too broad. It's been cutting off the monsoon moisture. It's been leading to more intense heat. Last summer was the hottest summer on record. This summer has been not so bad so far, except in the last week when we did the hottest August day ever at 118 degrees. Yeah, which coincides with the shift of that high pressure. It yeah. started to center right over top of us. Right, exactly. But, you know, uh, we're also seeing stuff like this happen in other parts of the world. So it's not just us, right? We're seeing these ridges that set up around the world expand. Absolutely. There is a belt of high pressure that exists around 30 degrees north, just a little south of us. Yeah. But it extends all the way around the world, over to uh, Egypt, over into uh, Mongolia and, and over into, or rather China, yeah. and then over into uh, the Pacific Ocean. That ridge of high pressure is getting stronger and it's getting bigger. And everybody that I've talked to that's in climate science is saying that that's the result of climate change. Yeah, and so what that leads to is less rain, hotter temperatures, but then again, we know because of climate change that the atmosphere can hold more water now so that when the rain does come, when everything aligns and the storms do actually happen, they're bringing more intense rain in more, a shorter amount of time. And of course, the problem is that under those really hot and dry early conditions, vegetation dies. So when we right. get those really strong rains, it washes away. We yeah, get flash the ground can't absorb it. Exactly. And that, yeah. yeah, that's what we're seeing here too, right? Just yeah. that crust, that that drought crust that everything runs off of. Yeah, and it makes it makes unfortunately our extremes that much more extreme. Our yeah. flash flooding extremes become more, and our drought extremes become more. Yeah, I mean, it's been incredible to see. I mean, just a few weeks ago we had huge chunk of northern and eastern Arizona that was actually above average for the monsoon to date, but we've been chipping away at that. And I just looked at the latest numbers today before you came on. It's really just Winslow left that's doing okay this monsoon season. Everywhere yeah. else across Arizona is below normal. Exactly. And and the, the sad thing about that is that uh, when the monsoon storms get 
churning back up again because it's been so dry. The first few storms again are going to be dry, yeah. which means we'll get a lot of lightning and uh, maybe some winds. Yeah. yeah. And that and adds dust. to the wild and dust. That of is what we've seen this monsoon season. We've gotten a few big dust storms, <laughs> so that's worked out for us. But, um, <laughs> well, for some, you know, for some of us, anyway. Uh, I know that, that you and myself and others across the valley have been looking at this for a long time, thinking we've got to figure out a way to rank these dust storms, like you know they do tornadoes or hurricanes, so that we know how severe these things are as they move in. So. I know you're getting close to publishing on that. Yeah, yeah. You are part of a, of a big group that we put together, and it's it's incredible. We got basically all of the major people in the valley that do meteorology. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody from uh, uh, SRP to uh, air quality to the Maricopa County Flood Control. We got all the experts, and we got them together. It was yeah. it was a project that's been going on for quite for some years. time. You know, yeah. yeah. And we said. Okay, let's see if we can put all of our brain power together and come up with a way to rank dust storms. And we did it. Uh, we've come up with one. We're trying it experimentally this year, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make some modifications after the year's over to, to kind of address some of the things that we're finding. But we have a scale now that ranks dust storms from one to five, with one being the least uh, severe dust storm yeah. all the way to a category five. And we've only had so far in, in the data that we've been looking at over the last 15 years, because the quality of our data really made a big jump in terms of dust storms back around uh, 2010. Yeah. Uh, and we uh, found that of the category fives, there's only been three. And one of them was the infamous July 5th, 2011, oh, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's the, the one that ever. everybody remembers. It's yeah. the one we compare every other dust storm to. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. I still remember when that occurred, I was getting phone calls from uh, places like South Africa saying, Are, is anybody still alive in Phoenix? I mean, they see all the video <laughs> yeah. of that storm. We're all alive, we're all just choking. <laughs> <laughs> we can't breathe. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But, but uh, it, it made worldwide coverage. Yeah, and, it sure did. Uh, it is by far the worst dust storm that we've seen in the last uh, 15 years. It yeah. is a Category 5. The other two um, are also notable because they're, they're, they were kind of interesting. One, it wasn't noticeable in terms of the dust storm because the dust storm was completely lost in the news because it happened on the same day as the Yarnell uh, oh, fire. The Hill fire. And, yeah. Everybody was paying attention up to what was going on uh, up there. there. And that night, a big dust storm came through, but it didn't really make a lot of news because the yeah. other news also, overpowered it. Also, at night, it, they're harder to see. Absolutely. And yeah. It, you know, when we get the chopper up and the sun is still up, it's like, you know, quite the image to see these huge things rolling in. And at night, they're hard to pick up on. You know, we're searching ADOT cameras across the valley to see if the visibility is low. <laughs> but very rarely do we have nighttime images of big, massive haboobs rolling in because we just don't have the visuals like right. we would during which the is one reason why we actually don't use visibility as one of our criteria because yeah. some of these storms do come in at night and it makes them very hard to determine. Yeah. So we're basing our, our scale primarily on dust concentration, how much dust is actually in the, in the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, the third of our Category 5 storms is also kind of noticeable. It only happened a couple years ago. Oh, which one? And it was the one that shut down the ASU football That's game. That's right. <laughs> that was quite a night. That was indeed. Yeah. And yeah. that was the third of our Category 5 storms. Well, and then that just goes to show, like, you know, if it happens, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around here, right? If a, if a dust storm rolls in at 10 o'clock at night and everyone's up in Yarnell, no one knows it happened. If it happens at an ASU football game. In the midst of it, where they have to it, shut the, the football yeah, game down. That's a big it, event. Exactly. That's exactly. A big event. But this is going to be useful, I think, because it I will so allow true. us to uh, compare different dust storms. Yeah, and, and to be clear, it's it's like the enhanced Fujita scale, so they'll be ranked after the fact, not in the moment or beforehand. Right, 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 right now. Now, maybe in the future, as our technology is getting better, we'll be able to do it real time and maybe even forecast these things. But yeah. right now, it's going to be a, a something like a tornado scale where we're going to do it after the event, hopefully be able to announce what the dust storm was uh, the day after it occurred. Yeah, and so great. we've had 
So far this uh, summer, two dust storms, mm -hmm. and they both came out to be Category 1. Well, so not too bad. All right, well, that's going to be published soon in the Journal of the American Meteorological Society, right? Or a Bulletin. Bulletin. Bulletin mm -hmm. of the American Which is one of the premier technical yes. journals that we meteorologists yes, love to read. it is. All right. Well, thank you for ha inviting me to be a part of that. That was actually, I, I was... Your insights have actually been very, very, very useful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I was very glad to, to help out and uh, give you the perspective on how we cover them in the media and what is important to us as we try to convey what's happening to the public. Yes. So, yes, thank you. The other thing that is real, super exciting that you're a part of is the World Meteorological Organization, right, the WMO. Right. Um, and you have been doing this for years, where you look at extreme weather across the world and verify these extremes, whether it's the hottest temperature ever recorded or, you know, the, the greatest flash flood. The most recent one was the longest lightning strike, right? That, right. That's in right. just in the last we, couple of weeks. Right. We put this, we put this project together because... Uh, uh, it serves a number of purposes, but one of the primary purposes is climate change. Yeah. That as we have climate change occurring, we have to make sure that the records that we are monitoring are good records. Mm -hmm. So what I do is when we have an extreme, hottest temperature as you say, or, or the strongest hurricane, um, I put together a team of experts. I, I, I kind of feel a little bit like uh, Nick Fury of the Avengers. There I, you go. <laughs> I, get to, you. I get to get the best <laughs> of the best. I call in the best scientists. Yeah. For every particular event, we, we look at all the data and we make a determination whether it's real. So a few uh, months ago, we got together a team of lightning experts mm -hmm. because we had had an um, observation that somebody had run across of a lightning flash that occurred during a storm back in 2017. It had been overlooked, actually, yeah. by the lightning people when it occurred, but somebody was going back. And what is cool is that now we have... Uh, instruments on board are weather satellites, they're mm -hmm. called lightning mappers, that can incredibly, very precisely uh, locate exactly where a lightning flash starts and yes. where it finishes. That is so cool. So where did this one start and where did it finish? Well, the, the impressive thing is it, it was one of a, a very, very big uh, severe thunderstorm that had taken place over the, the Great Plains. And it had started in East Texas, uh, basically east of Dallas. Okay. And seven, a little over seven seconds later, the lightning flash ended outside of Kansas City, Missouri. How many miles is that? That is 515 miles. In uh, seven seconds? In seven seconds. That's incredible. Uh, to put it in our perspective, it would be like having a lightning uh, flash that occurred here in Phoenix that goes all the way up to Salt Lake City. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, wow. And to find that years later, you said 2017. And yeah. Uh, there, the, and no one knew. That, that storm was actually a fairly historic storm meteorologically because it was one of the first storms where we truly identified these new kinds of lightning. We call them mega flashes. Yeah. And that storm had three mega flashes in it, and they wrote up a very detailed uh, professional paper about it. But they missed this one. This one occurred at 4 o'clock in the morning. And so yeah. they had thought that the storm had died down so it wasn't producing anything. That was his last but, hurrah. <laughs> but we, we, we re-examined the data. Yeah. And, in fact, I actually got some of the, the scientists that were involved in that original study to be part of my committee. And so they were kind of surprised. Oh, we didn't actually expect to see that. Wow. Uh, but we verified it. I love that. Uh, I'm putting you on the spot here. So if you don't know the answer, I I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. But what's the, what's the longest lightning strike we've seen in Arizona? Have we had one that in, has gone from Tucson to Flagstaff? In or? Arizona, the, we haven't had any mega flashes that, I, that we've noted. And okay. that's because our storms don't get quite big enough. In the Great Plains, yeah. you know, they can stretch for, for hundreds of miles. Right. Um, the, the biggest that I have heard of is around 25 miles okay. from where it starts to where it finishes, which, which points out a really important safety situation um, that the National Weather Service and, and, and meteorologists, we say that when there's a lightning storm, what you want to do is wait, go inside during the storm, of yeah. course, but then wait 30 minutes after the storm has passed before you go out and resume normal activities. Yeah. Because a storm, even 30 miles away, can put out a lightning flash that comes back and hits you. Yeah, yeah, so. we see that sometimes on the radar when we're storm tracking. The storm will be over here, and then all of a sudden we'll get like a lightning flash that shows up on our lightning tracker, and it is nowhere near a storm. And that just shows you like how, how long it can travel and how dangerous it is. Absolutely, and yeah. uh, 
that's that's what we we are really hoping with this record to make sure that people are aware of is that that you you hear about this this statement called uh, a bold out of the blue that uh, yes. lightning comes out yes. of clear skies it never comes out of clear skies it's coming from something far away far away yeah exactly yeah. and one of my uh, one of my team members decided he said maybe rather than calling it a bolt out of the blue maybe we should call it a bolt out of the gray because it comes from a cloud that's <laughs> a, a zombie flash <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly storm. all right I love that well that's so fascinating that we saw one that traveled that far across the country. Unbelievable. And uh, what, what's interesting is I told you it, was, it lasted seven seconds. Uh, the world record for the longest lightning flash yeah. um, is even longer than that. We had a lightning flash that occurred down in Argentina in 2020, and that flash lasted, believe it or not, 17 seconds wow. from start to finish. That's long. That is long. Normally, actually, the old definition of lightning in our uh, textbooks yeah. says that lightning only lasts less than a second. Well, we Please. now know that no. that's not the we, case. We've seen longer than that around here. Exactly. <laughs> we know better. Exactly. All right. So this monsoon has not been so great, but we still have some time left. We'll have to see how the tropics do, right? To see if maybe we can get some more moisture. And up in we're, there. we're starting to see the tropics yeah. off the coast of Mexico getting back charged up. There's a storm down there now, and, yeah. and hopefully uh, that'll mean more moisture coming up in this. So don't give up hope yet. We got until September 30th to, to get our stuff. Always together. have hope. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you so much for being here. I love talking weather with you. Uh, I hope to have you back. And, and again, for everyone at home, monsoon season runs until September 30th. So there's still time to get some rain and we'll keep tracking it for you here every day on ABC 15. Thank you for joining us.